So you want to start lifting, but you don't know where to begin. I'm going to give you my top five tips for beginners from a beginner. I've only been lifting for a little over a year, so I still consider myself to be a beginner. And I just want to share what I believe are the top five tips for beginners to really maximize their progress in their first year of lifting. supplements and researching supplements uh, kind of deciding what you need because uh, they that's exact they're just supplements um, they're not necessary in the gym at all in my opinion but you're probably gonna take them I mean I take BCAAs and pre-workout and NO boost and some post-workout stuff does it matter uh, for me, yeah. Um, I enjoy the benefits of it. And to be honest, I just take pre-workout just to take it. But everybody's different, and you're going to want to find a pre-workout that's good for you, that has things in it that are going to work for you. Um, and BCAAs, a lot of people think they're unnecessary. I personally enjoy them just to sip on during my workout. I'm probably always going to drink them, uh, but again, it's it's something that you need to research and decide if it's worth the money for you, because uh, they are, I mean, they are expensive, and you got to know what you're putting in your body, and if it's going to work for you, um, and there's, there's a bunch of products out there that people are going to try and sell you, uh, like glutamine for post-workout, people preach glutamine until you until you find people that have experience with glutamine and they'll tell you that it's basically 100% bullshit and you don't need it. Um, I bought some. I bought everything when I first started lifting, so I still have glutamine. So I just take it because I have it, but it's not something I believe you should invest in. Uh, so yeah, that's number five. It's supplementation and knowing what you need. Um, because again, they're just there to supplement your workout and your diet and your and your life, basically. Not necessary. All right, the fourth thing, well, second thing in the list, number four, is uh, going to be diet and just getting your diet in check. Um, now this. It doesn't have to be 100% like a 180 from where you are whenever you start. It really depends on your goals. Uh, what, like, where do you want to go in lifting? Uh, do you want to want to power lift? Do you want to compete in physique? Are you just doing it as a hobby just to kind of look better and to change your life? Because um, that's going to play into it. Uh, I mean, if you if you have goals of stepping on stage one day, you're going to want to. Eliminate all the bad food. Not all of it. You can still cheat every now and then. Um, but yeah, you're gonna want to reduce the calories, most likely. Stop eating fast food. Uh, I mean, that's at least what I did. Is I I was eating fast food like probably every day, honestly. And then whenever I started working out. Uh, changed a lot. Started eating at home more, buying chicken at the store, rice at the store, uh, just healthier foods. Started tracking my calories. That's a huge one. I believe that if you have any desire to lose weight and to look better, you need to track your calories. So weighing your food, bought a food scale. Um, 
and then check, set a number of calories that you want to eat and track your weight with those calories. So that way you know in a week, eating at 2,200 calories, you lost a pound or you gained a pound. That way you can edit your calories to fit your goals and, um, and yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to that. I always, I stress counting calories. Um, it does become a little bit addicting, to be honest. Once I started, I can't, like, I can't stop. I can't go out to eat now without thinking about, okay, how many ounces of chicken is this, or how many calories are in this pizza, or how many ounces of fries am I eating, so. Be wary of that, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, to always be thinking about how much food you're actually getting, and how healthy it is for you, so, yeah. That's number four. And that brings us to number three. It's gonna be preparation. Um, so yeah, prepared in your diet, prepared for the gym, uh, prepared to rearrange your day to make sure you can get a good workout in. Like I'm here at 5.30 in the morning because I get off late at work tonight and I don't want to be here at the gym later than I normally would be. So prepare for that. Um, and then diet, preparation for your diet is huge because if you have your meals made and ready to go, you're not going to be tempted to go out and eat. You'll know that you have a meal ready for you that's healthier than anything you're going to order outside of the outside of your house, essentially. So. Whenever I have my meals made and somebody wants to go out to eat, if I go with them, I'm not gonna eat there. I'm gonna just get a water or a diet soda or something and just hang out. And and know that I have, you know, chicken and rice or something waiting for me at home. Uh, because yeah, if you if you don't have them made, you're gonna be even more tempted to order something at a restaurant. Because you're not gonna want to go home and cook at night. So uh, preparation's huge. And yeah, preparation for the gym. If it means that much to you, you will work your, your entire day around being able to get to the gym. So going early in the day, going later in the day. And then preparation in your workouts, making sure you have all your right equipment, making sure you have all your supplements with you. Um, it just plays a big part. I think preparation is the, is the key to success in most things. And the gym is no exception. Number two, this is one of the more important ones, is going to be making sure that you're getting ample protein in your diet. Uh, you can eat all the healthy food you want, but if you don't have enough protein in your diet, you're not gonna build muscle as fast as you need to, and you're not gonna make the progress that you think you should be making. So when I started lifting like a year ago, I didn't know how much protein I needed. I was just eating some food and taking like a scoop of protein a day. Uh, but yeah, you should be, people say, I believe the minimum you want to get is like 0.8 grams per pound of lean body weight. So if you weigh 150 pounds and you're 20% body fat, Let's not math this. It's too early to math. But uh, I personally prefer eating at least a gram per pound of my, just my weight, not my lean weight. Um, just that way I know I'm getting enough. And it's all personal preference, honestly. As long as you're meeting the minimum, you will be okay. But for me, it's easier to just eat uh, one gram per pound of body weight. So for instance, right now I weigh 180, so Normally I would be eating 180 grams of protein, but I am in a deficit, I'm in competition prep, so I've upped it a little bit, I've taken about 200 grams a day, just to help my muscles rebuild themselves, since I am in a deficit. Um, but yeah, it's, that's the building block of your entire lifting career is protein, because it's gonna allow you to build muscle 
and to keep it um, even in a deficit. And especially at the beginning of your lifting career, you're going to put on more gains than you would at any point for the rest of your lifting career. For the first year or two, you're going to you're going to build mass quicker than you will for the rest of your life. So, protein is huge. Can't stress that enough. Whenever somebody asks me, like, what what is your best best piece of advice? Nor pretty much, I'm going to I'm going to ask them first: Are you getting enough protein? And if the answer is I'm not sure, then I can't be sure what to tell you. And that's where tracking your calories comes in. Track all the protein you take in, weigh all your food, and you'll know if you're getting enough protein. And that brings us to my most important rule, or most important tip, is find a routine and stick to it. Uh, Find out how many days a week you can work out. How many days a week do you want to work out? Maybe it's only three, maybe it's four, maybe it's five, maybe it's six. Find a routine that works for you and stick with it. So you can progress, you can track your progression on those lifts. You're not just coming to the gym and doing whatever you feel like doing. And you're gonna progress way faster with the routine than you will just lollygagging and doing random workouts in the gym. So if you can only work out three days a week, maybe you do upper body Monday, lower body Wednesday, and then a full body slash upper body, whatever you want to do on Friday. A four day split, you do upper, lower, upper, lower. Or maybe you only want one leg day a week, you can adjust it to that. For me, I come every single day, just because I'm in prep, but whenever I'm on a six day routine, I do a PPL, so, or well, a bro split, technically. So I do chest and triceps on Monday, back and biceps on Tuesday, legs and shoulders on Wednesday, and then I repeat. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, take Sunday off. Um, too many times people people ask me, you know, what should I be doing? And I tell them, or I ask them, do you have a routine? Like, do you do a specific workout every day? And they say, no, I just do whatever I feel like doing when I come in the gym. Well, that's not gonna work. I mean, you are gonna get, I guess, somewhat stronger, but you're not gonna be able to track your progression. And if you're, switching up the rep schemes every single day and doing different exercises every day for every muscle group, you're not gonna know how strong you're getting. And the, the physical uh, changes that you're gonna see aren't gonna be as great as if you stick to your routine. I can't preach a routine enough. It's uh, every time somebody asks me, what is your biggest tip? That is what I give them. I know I probably said that about protein, but I give them that answer but this is, this is what I preach. It's having a routine, sticking to it, tracking your progress, and that's, that's how I believe you're gonna make the biggest gains. Um, you know, if I spent the first month of my lifting career, as you might call it, uh, trying to figure out what was the best, the best workout, what's the best routine. Honestly, it comes down to your personal preference. What are your goals? Um, there's you know, things such as fat and five by five and strong lifts. Those are gonna, those are gonna do different things for your body in terms of strength and muscle growth. And PPL with high volume is gonna just be hypertrophy based and you're gonna put on way more size that way. So it depends on your goals, but yeah, stick to your routine. Give it time to show changes. Give it time for you to progress. And if you don't see a change in a month, don't give up on it. Because this is a slow process. Too many people think that you're gonna come in the gym and one month later, you're gonna be huge and you're gonna be ripped. It's not like that. This takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of dedication, a lot of hard work, and you will see the results if you stick to it. I promise you that. So, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Hopefully somebody watches this and I help you out a little bit. I'm not the best speaker, uh, at least in terms of bodybuilding and working out like I know kind of what I want to say but it just it doesn't come out 100% uh, coherent so uh, hopefully this helps somebody I know this would have helped me whenever I first started just knowing these little basic tips um, to help me progress but uh, thank you guys for watching if you stumbled across this video um, and check out my other videos because I do a video every day so thank you guys kill it in the gym today